Is it truth or is it legend? Does Thomasville possess a charm, a mystique sufficient to set it apart? If it's truth, what creates this special quality? Let's free your fantasies and skim back through time to discover the realities which, from the beginning, have made Thomasville, Georgia truly a place apart. The pines extended for miles, and the land was gently rolling. While there was no great river, the area was dotted with many crystal lakes. Fire here was not always a threat, for it periodically cleared the underbrush, allowing the pines to grow tall and clear and filtering the sunshine as though through cathedral windows. Game was obviously very abundant. Deer, alligators, turkey, and quail. All were here just for the taking. It was a land filled with both challenge and promise. Wandering bands of hunters had passed through this land for thousands of years, but no great settlements had marked their passage. In 1814, following the Battle of Horseshoe Bend, Native American inhabitants, primarily the Creeks, ceded their lands in this region. This would eventually become Southwest Georgia. The sparse settlement in the area led the state of Georgia to institute a land lottery in 1820. Those fortunate drawers who had won this lottery could leave their existing homes and stake their future on this distant and unproven land. Many who did not wish to move to the frontier sold or traded their land. Among the willing buyers were settlers already in the area and the sons of plantation owners seeking new land. Among the early settlers lured here by the rich, untouched soil was Thomas Jefferson Johnson, who established Pebble Hill Plantation. And in 1825, he drafted the legislation creating Thomas County. The region quickly became an agricultural kingdom based on cotton produced on the large plantations. Slavery was considered an economic necessity under the plantation system. Less than 9% of the population ever owned a slave. On the other hand, the larger landowners in Thomas County had an unusually high number. In the year 1830, only five years after Thomas County was created, over one-third of the county's population of 3,299 residents were actually listed as slaves. By the year 1850, the population was over 50% African American. Those slaves that were skilled craftsmen and some women were often allowed to work and earn wages. Festus Flipper, a shoemaker and a carriage fitter, managed the carriage shop owned by his owner, Ephraim Ponder. For this work, Flipper was paid a wage. This almost classic Old South culture was tempered by a large population of yeoman farmers who owned few, if any, slaves and who were nearly self-sufficient. The diversified agrarian economy included rice, corn, sugarcane, potatoes, and livestock, but cotton was sure king. The town of Thomasville, established as the county seat in the year 1831, was a flourishing community by the 1850s. Immigrants from other southern states New England, and Scotland came here seeking new opportunities. Antebellum Thomasville boasted churches, schools, stores, hotels, and the services of doctors, dentists, and lawyers. The earlier log courthouse was replaced with a fine brick building, another John Wynne design, in the year 1858. Transportation remained a major limitation for the merchants, the planters and yeoman farmers alike. To ship cotton to the cotton brokers in Savannah, the cotton had to be transported overland to the port of St. Mark's, Florida, 
where it was loaded on ships. Finally, in April of 1861, prospects for the area were enhanced with the completion of the railroad from Savannah to Thomasville. However, the expected financial boon was never realized. The first train to arrive from Savannah carried a shell fired from Fort Sumter at the very beginning of the war between the states. Although Thomas County was not the scene of any battles, it played an important role in the war between the states. Approximately 1,500 men served in the Confederate and state militia units, and few Georgia counties furnished more companies of men in proportion to their population than Thomas County did. They outfitted themselves, elected their own officers, and stood ready for call. Eventually, 12 units would leave their Thomas County homes for war. Some saw the fiercest fighting of this war. Although Thomas County was spared the destruction inflicted on other parts of the state of Georgia, 500 local soldiers died from battlefield wounds or illnesses. The county was equally important as a supplier of agricultural produce. Maintaining a high level of productivity from 1861 to 1865, the farmers and planters of Thomas County made a major contribution to the war effort. Thomasville also served as a prisoner of war camp for a brief period. Approximately 5,000 Union prisoners were moved from Andersonville, Georgia to Thomasville to prevent their liberation by Sherman's troops. Many local people provided food, clothing, and medical care, but a number of the prisoners died of typhoid, of smallpox, or other diseases while in Thomasville. The war ended for Thomas County on May 9, 1865, when Union soldiers marched into Thomasville and established a headquarters here. War-weary veterans returned home to a devastated economy. They found the civic institutions reeling under the extreme conditions which existed by the war's end. They came together to reinvent the institutions which maintain a civil society. When times seemed insurmountably difficult, the enterprising spirit which had come to characterize Thomas County was still strong. Cotton was produced with freedmen working as sharecroppers. Some were so successful that they were able to become landowners themselves. Farmers also diversified. New crops were sought and tested. Some proved quite profitable. Reconstruction provided new opportunities for newly freed slaves, also known as freedmen. Schools and churches were established and newly enfranchised voters added their voices to civic life. In 1867, Thomasville voters, including the first black voters, approved a bond issue to build a railroad line to Albany, Georgia, connecting with routes to the upper Midwest. Overcoming the heritage of slavery, the Flipper family used the educational opportunities that became available to freedmen during the Reconstruction era, as well as their own perseverance, to build successful careers in the fields previously closed to African Americans. Henry Flipper, who was born a slave in Thomas County in 1856, became the first African American to graduate from the United States Military Academy at West Point in the year 1877. The land continued to charm, the quiet streets to weave a spell. Because the pine-scented air was credited with the power to alleviate tuberculosis, wealthy patients were directed to Thomasville. Aided by aggressive promotions, the trickle of patients became a steady stream of healthy, wealthy visitors. The folklore that a Yankee is worth two bales of cotton and twice as easy to pick was quickly embraced. But there was a leaven of true hospitality and a common interest in sports like hunting and fishing. Attracting wealthy patrons meant providing first-class accommodations. In 1874, the Mitchell House was built at Broad and Jackson Streets at a cost of $100,000. Its success led to demands for another major hotel. In 1885, the Piney Woods, designed by J.A. Wood to provide luxurious accommodations, was built at Broad Street and Smith Avenue. The Piney Woods faced Smith's Grove, a 26-acre park which soon became known as Yankee Paradise. The least expensive room in the Piney Woods Hotel was $4 a day. 
1885 brought a new and grander Mitchell House, also designed by Wood, to replace the earlier hotel which had burned in 1883. It now covered the first block of North Broad Street and faced Jefferson Street. Affluent natives mixed freely with people from different backgrounds at social events. Horizons were lifted. Viewpoints were broadened. Thomasville's winter residency of about 12,000 would compare to a summer population of 5,500. We soon supported more than 10 small hotels and 25 boarding houses. Local families often vacated their homes to rent them out for the season. And many visitors, eager to return to Thomasville year after year, built winter cottages here. The Lampham Patterson House, built in 1884 and now a state historic site, was one of the first. Other While the citizens of Thomasville prospered, plantation owners did not share in the boom. To make ends meet, some boarded guests or leased to hunters. Soon plantations were offered for sale and by 1900 all of the antebellum cotton plantations sold to northerners or midwesterners. The new owners had little interest in agriculture. Their primary activity was shooting and the plantations were transformed into quail hunting plantations. Even as the new resorts in Florida began to lure the winter residents further south, thus ending the Grand Hotel era, the plantations endured. The excellent quail habitat provided by the longleaf pines and the plantation culture itself continued to attract investors into the 20th century. Today, there are still more than 80 privately owned plantations covering some 300,000 acres of land in the Red Hill region and passionate citizens have preserved a rich architectural legacy. Visionary leadership, enterprising citizens, and a cosmopolitan culture link the past and the present of Thomas County. We hope you will find, as visitors did more than a century ago, that Thomasville is indeed a place apart. <laughs>